Hey guys, Jacob Wheeler here on Table Rock. In last video, we talked about how to catch bass in super cold water. You know, the shad wraps a cold water killer. When the water starts to warm up a little bit though, I switch up my actions and switch over to a wiggle wart. And this is a bait that catches them all over the country, not just for the Ozarks, obviously it kills them in Table Rock and, and Beaver and a lot of these Ozark lakes, but it works all over the country. I've caught them down there at Hartwell, I've caught them uh, at Smith Lake. A lot of these rocky um, rocky lakes, you know, Highland Reservoir lakes, it's, it's, a, it's a killer in the springtime. And I'm gonna tell you what you need to look for to catch more bass on it. Here we go, the wiggle wart box. This sucker is, you got, you know, original wiggle warts, you got old wiggle, you got, you got new wiggle warts, you got them all in here. Um, it's a bait that catches them and I collect them and, and mess around with them. I have probably over a hundred wiggle warts, you know, to my name. This is just one of my boxes, one of my many boxes. And, you know, it's a lot of fun. It seems like, you know, the, the fish just absolutely eat this bait when that water hits about 50. It seems like that action, that wide wobbling action, that crawdad, the crawdads start coming out of them rocks a little bit more. Um, and, they, and they, right before the spawn, it's always seemed to me that the bass really feed heavily on crawfish. It's something about that. Um, they get on those rocky banks, they feed up, they know they're about to spawn, they're gonna lose some weight. And a wiggle wart it is just a stone cold killer in those conditions. So, you know, for me, I, I'm gonna pick a few different colors. You know, if the water's muddy, you know, you can't go wrong with, you know, the reds, uh, you know, something similar to that. You know, red, a red colored wiggle wart, let me get this, you know how that, the red's just a, a great color when the water's stained up, muddy. Uh, the water's clear though, you know, you definitely, you know, your phantom craws, uh, you, you know, your browns, your, your natural craws, you know, that that's what you're gonna wanna go with. Um, and then there's sometimes, I've even caught them really good on, on a shad color wiggle wart, um, if they're really keyed in on that. But but for the most part, you know, keeping it to the to the darker brown, the darker, darker hues is, is what works for me. <laughs> All right, guys, I got one right here. <laughs> Look at this. I picked up this one a while back, a buddy of mine gave it to me. It's a mistake color. It's got a spring crawl on one side and a little brown crawl on the other. And I, I told him, I said, well, what in the world, dude? He's like, it's a good color. I'm like, yeah, but the problem is, which side are they eating? They eating the brown color or the color of the spring crawl color? I mean, I, I don't get it. I mean, that's something that, hey, hey, I want just a solid colored body bait. I want to know if they're eating brown or if they're eating a spring crawl. As simple as that. All right, guys, let's talk about rod setup. This is really important. I see a lot of guys, uh, you know, throw the wrong setups on the crankbait rods and, and that's not a good deal. You gotta be really particular about what you throw. Uh, you know, especially having the right action and right line size is key in getting bites and also getting those fish in the boat. If your rod's not doing the work that it needs to be doing and hooking those fish, you're gonna have a lot of fish come off. You know, a lot of times they don't get a bait really good and you only get one hook. So making sure your rod setup is, is really important. First off, let's talk about the reel though. Um, this is a Akuma Komodo. You know, gear ratio is really important when you're cranking. Uh, for me, I like a five to one gear ratio when I'm cranking. You know, that's, that's a real important thing this reel does a really good job uh, and, and it when you're cranking down through there it's something that you want to feel every rock the thing about a wiggle ward is it's not a fast moving bait it's a bait that you're cranking down through those rocks and you get you get it down there first you're reeling pretty fast and you slow the retrieve down by that that bait just crawling over those rocks that's when you get bit you know crawling over those rocks and, and, and feeling every rock a lot of times I'll crank that wiggle ward down through there and I'll feel a big rock coming. You can feel, you know, a big rock coming through there and you just, you stop it for a minute and you hesitate and, boom, you know, that's when they bite it. So taking your time and slowing, that slower retrieve helps me. You know, I love to go fast. I love to go round and down the bank 100 miles an hour. But for me, that Komodo slows me down, helps me a lot and gets, gets me a little few more bites throughout the day. Now, line size is important. I throw eight to 12 pound line. Now you say, why eight to 12? Um, a lot of times when I'm throwing a wiggle wart, I'm throwing it in clear water. And, and you know, I need to get it down there a pretty decent, de pretty decent depth. You know, 10 foot of visibility, 12 foot of visibility, they still bite a crankbait. And you know, you have to look for the windy banks, but they'll still bite that crankbait. And for eight pound line, that's when I'm gonna throw that. When I'm in stained water, I'm gonna throw 12 because it's not as important a lot of times to get as deep, you know, 12 pound fluorocarbon, sub fluorocarbon, to get as deep down there when that water's stained. So, you know, eight pound suffix fluorocarbon, 10 pound suffix fluorocarbon when you're in the clear water, 12 pound um, when you're in the stained water. 
Now let's talk about the rod setup. Now this is really important. You know, this is uh, Scott Martin's cranking rod, Akuma cranking rod. Um, it, it's a really good rod for that. And what you want in a cranking rod, uh, for me, is when I hook a fish, you don't want to feel like the fish has got you. You want to take your time with that fish, but you want to have control of what you're doing. The worst thing that you can have, if you hook a bass out there, and you know, I mean, obviously if you catch a six or seven pounder, he's going to have control over you on some little, you know, little hooks like that, but little trouble hooks. But you want to be able to pull into those fish and have control of where that fish is going, taking your time, feel like you're not, he doesn't have you. You know, I have a lot of rods I've seen where you, you hook them and 14 inches, you know, are pulling you everywhere. And that's not what you want. And this rod's perfect for that seven foot cranking rod. Uh, you know, a big thing is the tip. You know, it's a medium action, but it has some backbone in here. You know, I see a lot of guys that, you know, flimsy rods, it, it's okay, but for me, I like a little bit of backbone in my rod. Back in here, it'll bend, it's a parabolic rod, and it'll bend up in here, but it, it goes to backbone and it allows that fish to really get those hooks in his mouth. And you don't have a lot of your fish coming back skin hooked, they're, they're hooked really well. That's my setup right there. Hopefully you guys use a couple of these wiggle wards, get out there in the springtime, Trust me, you'll catch a lot more bass. This isn't social media, this is the real this world here, real okay? Life, this is where you really gotta catch the fish. This second show, I cannot